we've had an issue among uh, the, the, the rankings affecting people's perception or having a bias toward or against certain teams for a long time that have affected the rankings deep into the season and maybe all the way to the conclusion of the season. The best result or the, or the best example of that that I can think of is that in 2003, 2004, USC and Oklahoma started the season either 1-2 or 2-1 in the rankings, and Auburn, I believe, was 19th. Mm-hmm. Well, the the approach then was you've, you've made your, your spot. You've claimed your position. Therefore, unless you lose, you're not going to lose your position. So Auburn just kept winning, 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 and they go up the charts, do, 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 and they ran into a ceiling. That ceiling was Oklahoma and USC. Well, the issue was, of course, we didn't have a playoff, and therefore you had three undefeated major conference teams. But Auburn was left at number three because they didn't have pole position to start. No, there's no question about it. That's an absolutely fantastic example. And, well, I mean, you've introduced the point that, you know, Auburn has got historically gotten the short end of the stick more than other SEC heavyweights. And it's because Auburn doesn't have the same – brand name that Alabama does, or more recently, you know, Georgia, but especially Alabama, like Alabama would never have suffered the fate that Auburn did in 2004. And that's, again, that's brand name. We're not talking about who's the best team. It's, it, it goes straight to the brand. And that again, that we're, whenever we're not talking about who's the best team, that, that immediately poisons the well, and that's not the discussion we should be having. And you're absolutely right. And, and so while I would certainly say that like, you know, it, w- it would be really hard to say to kick USC or Oklahoma out of the BCS championship game in that 2004 season. We can we can acknowledge that in that own silo, that own bracket. But at the same time, we can acknowledge that Auburn got treated in a way that, again, would not have applied to Alabama, probably would not have applied to Georgia. Also, LSU, since Nick Saban was coaching LSU back then, if we had envision a hypothetical where LSU went unbeaten in 2004, uh, LSU probably has one of those two spots, and but Auburn wasn't treated the same way, much as Auburn wasn't treated well in the 1983 national championship debate. Auburn just seems to get the short end of the stick, and it's and that's brand name. And that also goes to Mark, as you're well aware, the 2014 playoff, that first year of the playoff, when you know the whole the, the whole framework of the playoff could have been set forth in a very positive clear specific way we could have gotten an ordered cr- set of criteria process could have been made to be very transparent but at the end of that season what did everyone get about the college football playoff that it was made for tv that it was run by espn that the helmet was going to rule out over and against any considerations of who was actually the best team you know of course ohio state got in over tcu and baylor i mean we didn't know that going into the final weekend but coming out of it uh, it's like the wool was pulled over uh, from all our eyes. You know, we were able to see clearly, oh, this is just a helmet thing. It's basically the BCS only with four teams instead of two. So, again, we weren't talking about who was the best team. It was all about which is the biggest brand name. It goes to Auburn 2004. It goes to Ohio State, TCU, Baylor 2014. So many other episodes from college football's history from various eras, I should add, like not just from the playoff era but also from the BCS era, from the bowl coalition era, and from the old pole and bowl era. You can find examples from any era.